All right, welcome to Christian Overcomers and thank you for joining us. You know, I wanna talk real quick about this Kaepernick guy or Kaepernick, however you say his name. Uh, the NFL football player who is refusing to stand during the national anthem. Um, first off, his reasons for not standing are not based off of any factual evidence. And secondly, he is setting a dangerous precedent in America. Even today, I saw some articles talking about other NFL players planning to uh, uh, protest the na national anthem as well. Um, some articles even said whole teams might be planning it. And um, just today at the opening, uh, before the opening kickoff of the NFL season, a Denver, a Denver Bronco player protested the national anthem. I mean, so what we're seeing is we're starting to see a, a, a possibly a, a regular trend here. And it's leading in dangerous territory. You might think, well, it's just his right to, um, his constitutional right to opt out of it. And it is. That's true. But it's setting a dangerous precedent. And we'll talk about that here in a second. Because, uh, well, number one, in Matthew chapter 12, verse 25, Jesus told us that a kingdom divided against itself shall not stand. And the only thing Kaepernick and others are succeeding in is dividing our nation even further than it already is. And, um, you know, what, by, by doing this protest, it's, it's putting a match to the fire or fueling the fire of more riots in America, more disrespect towards uh, police officers, um, and encouraging even teens that are watching these football games to, to um, be disrespectful towards authority. Um, and it is inspiring hatred for our country, its founding and all that it used to stand for. That's the number one thing that's going on here. It is inspiring hatred. They like to say that Christians are haters and all this because we stand for morality and, and what's right. But the true haters are coming out and they're showing their colors. They are the ones that hate. How ironic, isn't it? They have, they have no decency, no respect. I mean, these guys are millionaires, many of them, multi-millionaires. And they think, and they're crying about oppression. Give me a break. I mean, think about how, how um, you know, the poor white, the, some of the poor white folks feel about uh, some of these rich, uh, I'm not making this a racist thing, but some of these rich black uh, football players do you think they're going to appreciate this? Do you think this is helping the cause when, 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 uh, when whites are constantly being beat down, literatively and figuratively, by black nationalists and black racists? Th Praise God, there are many, many great uh, uh, black Christians, Asian Christians, um, Latinos, you name it, uh, Christians of all colors and, and shades. But what we're dealing with here is, it, is nothing more than hatred. And it's being, I have no doubt it's being fueled by Satan himself to divide and conquer America. Get, start off with little things like this. And this sows the seed into, into kids' minds and other generations to dislike America. Because when they're watching that football game, those, that, uh, that youth, and they see their so-called role model having an irritated look on his face and kneeling down or sitting down during the national anthem, what do you think, what, what kind of an example do you think they're... Uh, they're going to follow. 
I think if this trend continues on, we ought to boycott the NFL. It's just a game. It's just a game. And there's people playing just a game that are setting a dangerous precedent of hating America. Now, um, obviously there are a few bad apples in every bunch. Um, overall, white police officers, the, the, statistics, the statistics show it, the facts are there. They're not going around. Um, they're not all racist uh, white guys going around trying to, to uh, target blacks. Again, there's always going to be a few bad apples. There's going to be a few bad black cops that don't like white people. You had that in the army. I experienced it in the army. There's, there's racist white people and there's racist black people. But there isn't a, a, a nationwide catastrophe going on with uh, white cops uh, trying to murder innocent black people. I mean, let, let's get real here. I mean, th they're promoting ignorance and lies. And, you know, when it comes to groups like or people like Kaepernick and Black Lives Matter. Again, it's all about sowing seeds of hate. Interestingly enough, uh, Kaepernick's girlfriend is a black nationalist Muslim. And she is an activist in the Black Lives Matter movement. So it's no coincidence that Kaepernick is doing what he's doing. Some have suggested that his girlfriend inspired him to do this. And I have no doubt. There's a, there's a heavy connection between Islam and black nationalism. I mean black racism. But this brings me to the question, because some might be listening, thinking, well, should Christians pledge allegiance to America? And... As a Christian, I first pledge allegiance to God and his kingdom. I mean, that's, that's number one. But I do believe it is proper and right and honorable for a Christian to, um, to show respect towards their flag and towards their country. I mean, it's called loving your neighbor. That's what the flag stands for. It stands for your neighbor. And Jesus did teach that. He, the first commandment was to love God. And the second commandment was to love your neighbor as yourself. And when you're, when you're uh, protesting the flag, you're protesting your neighbors. You're disrespecting them. And um, moreover, also the flag represents all those who have fought and died for our country, fought and died for those people to even be able to play football. And, uh, you know, I've, I've served with uh, men that have lost their lives when this nation called for their service. And how do you think that makes me feel when I see some uh, grown-up baby that is completely ignorant of the facts, sitting there whining and crying and drawing all sorts of attention to themselves. It makes me very angry. It's just downright rude and selfish for these NFL players to be doing this. And it disgusts me. You know what? Don't think for a moment that I'm saying that Christians ought to just do whatever the government tells them to do or be uh, pressured into, um, you know, worshiping the state or something like that. Because there is an instance where, where uh, Daniel, while living in Babylon, as well as the three Hebrew children, Nebuchadnezzar, the king, or you could say the government, was had a day where they were forcing everybody to bow down before an idol. And um, 
at when it, if it come if it ever comes to that, yes, then we do opt out. If the government ever passes some law or, or changes the national anthem in a way that elevates the government as God, then I am all for protesting or honorably opting out and saying, my conscience will not let me, I will not worship any other God but the God of the Bible. And, um, but that's not what's going on here. The, the, the national anthem is just an honorable song for the country. It's, it's a song that's supposed to bring unity to the nation. That's the purpose of the Pledge of Allegiance and, and the national anthem. It, they're to bring unity. Opposite of what Satan tries to do to our country, he wants to divide and conquer it. He wants to take this nation down so that he can build his, his new world order. That's what it comes down to. These groups like Black Lives Matter, they're just pawns in the hand of the devil. Plain and simple. And if you don't understand that, you need to get reading, my friend, to become familiar with the Word of God. Um, what these people are really protesting, again, they're not protesting, uh, uh, you know, uh, anti-black racism and bigotry or something like that. Their problem really is, in my, in my opinion, their problem really is that this country in its founding was too white and too Christian. And of course, Obama, you know, he came along and he was saying the same things, but in different ways. We got to bring change. This America was so terrible before when it was more Christian. And these people in these movements have been brainwashed to think that white Christians are the source of evil. And it's very sad. You know what? I'm going to just quote, uh, I'm going to read a few verses from uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 12, in support of why I believe Christians are biblically obligated to participate in the national anthem as well as the Pledge of Allegiance. And here's why. Um, Peter saying, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles or the nations, be honest among all people. That whereas they may speak against you um, as evildoers, they may be, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. In other words, if you are clean, you are respectful towards others, the unbelievers will see that. But if you protest and you just you want to be this rotten apple and big crybaby, then people are going to say they're not going to they're not going to get a good Christian witness out of that. He's in verse 13, he says, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man. Now, not not ordinances that cause you to deeply violate God's law for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as uh, as supreme or unto the governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. In other words, if you're honorable and you're respectful towards other people, that will soon show how ignorant the others are. It'll show how ignorant the unbelievers are because they will see your character and it will shine. As free, he says, and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as servants of God, he says, honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, and honor the king. Just like Daniel. Remember when Daniel, he was in this pagan empire. Nebuchadnezzar was his king, but he was still honorable up until the point 
when he was told to worship another god. When he was told to worship that golden image of Nebuchadnezzar. But besides that, Nebuchadnezzar loved Daniel. And that is our example of how we should act and be. So as a Christian, even though America is, is starting to, you know, we've got the problem with abortion. We've got some, a lot of different problems in America right now. Should we just be mad and start being a crybaby and, and protesting the national anthem? Would that help? That wouldn't help at all, my friends. Anyways, this precedent that's being set by Kaepernick and probably many more NFL players is very disturbing and it is setting a very dangerous example for our children. And it does divide our nation. And we need to just be alert and watch. All right. I hope you enjoyed this message. God bless you. And be a Christian overcomer. Christian Overcomers is brought to you by the tithes and offerings of our listeners. If you'd like to support our ministry, please go to ChristianOvercomers.com. God bless you, and thank you for your support. He has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never call retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him. Be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on.